so much your work. I know that it's interesting. I know it's fun. And I also know that you're uh, having some issues with it, but that's okay. Um, you can't expect to be expected to get it all right now. I came across something this last week as I was going through this. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of Carol Osborne who wrote um, in, in Harding, um, and he said this, here, here is this, and you might get a kick out of listening to this. The Greek students lament. Each day the sun arises, I stumble from my bed. Amid the morning darkness, I stand and scratch my head. The thought of breakfast beckons, but then my knees go weak. Before the day is over, I'll have to study Greek. Alphas, betas, and gammas, deltas, and diphthongs, too. Conjunctions and declensions, rough breathings make me blue. My silver tongue gets twisted when I try to speak, and I strain to understand this not so quione Greek. Plato and Aristotle both used it well, I'm told, but when I'm asked to try it, my blood runs mighty cold. Sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's rather bleak, as me and all my comrades do battle with our Greek. The sun is dropping in the west. The stars are tinkling now, twinkling now. Another day is ending and I've made it through somehow. I'll study and I'll learn it, for truth is what I seek. But Lord, in all your wisdom, why did you choose Greek? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So... <laughs> So anyway, I thought y'all would get a kick out of that as we get into this tonight, okay? Before we begin, let's pray. Carl, Chuck, would you lead us, please, brother? Certainly. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for the beautiful day that you've blessed us with. We're thankful for the abilities that you've given us to understand and to read. To We're thankful for the word that you've blessed us with that we can study. Uh, we're thankful, Lord, for our curious minds. We want to know better how to understand your word. We pray your blessings on our instructor. We pray your blessings on all those who are participating in the class. Uh, we ask, Lord, that you give us patience and give us encouragement. Help us to be an encouragement to one another and to our teacher. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. But, of course, we're especially thankful for your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get on the uh, lesson three in the workbook. And let's just kind of start going through some of this. And uh, we'll talk about all the things that we've got to deal with. Uh, a few moments ago, um, <clears throat> uh, Brother Chuck wanted to know he has taken Spanish, so he's got one up on me, and uh, the bottom line is he knows that you've got to drop some form in the English or in the Spanish to add on these other forms, and that's exactly what's going on here. In Lesson 3, we're talking about the present active indicative of the verbs, and again, we kind of want to go, we don't kind of want to, but we want to go over all the words. What is gnosko? I know. There you go. Good job. Good job, Smith. And I want everybody just to jump in there and say it, all right? Uh, don't look at your books. Just just jump in there. Grafo. All right. All right. Very good. Egero. There you go, Justin. Good job, buddy. Thalo. Now I'm hearing the crickets again. <laughs> I, I wish. I wish or I will. Very good. Okay. I wish or I will. Did Osco. I teach. Very good. Very good. Very good. Pimpo. I send. I send. Very yeah. good. Very good. Pharaoh. Fair. I bring. I bear or I bring. That's right. That's right. Lombano. I take, I take or I receive. I take or I receive. Very, very good. So that's that's the key. And again, if you look on page, um, let's see what page is, page 11, you have that vocabulary on lesson three in the book. Just drop that last omega. And as I was telling Chuck between or right before the class started, that omega uh, we'll drop out, and then you'll put these other endings in. The epsilon iota sigma for the second person uh, singular, and the epsilon, emota, uh, epsilon iota for the third person singular. The You drop the omega, and you put in an omicron, mu, epsilon, nu, 
so you see that's how you form all of, and conjugate all of those verbs. So if I say the word age, what does that mean? Age. Mm. Mm, okay. Okay, you. First thing I would do is I would look up and make sure what the word ago is. Right. See that first ending stem would be ago, and what does that mean? I lead. Mm -hmm. So now, ago, agace, age, that's third person singular. So it's going to be he, she, leads. or it leads. Okay? okay? Does that make sense? Everybody following me? Everybody okay on that? Okay. Grafe. Again, got the same thing. You drop the, you look in the lexicon, find the word means what? I write. Grafo, you drop the omega. You've got the epsilon iota ending on it, so then it would be he, she, or it writes. Right. Okay. Of course, now think about that. It writes. Uh, what's going to write? All right. Um, Leguson. Leguson. Drop. The, okay. You look at the lexical form. Lego means what? I say or speak. You drop the omega. You add the omicron, upsilon. Iota, excuse me, Omicron, Upsilon, Sigma, Iota, and then it's what? First person, second person, they, third person, what? They, they, they are. They say. Right, it's they say. Third person, plural. They say. They say. Now, again, when I was going through this last week, we talked about the idea that the second person singular as well as the second person plural is always going to be translated now by the word what? You. you. Back years ago, it was translated then thou. All righty. So let's get with the workbook now and kind of go over that. Again, be sure to master the vocabulary. Greek verbs have what? Like every other verb, like every other language. Five things. You can look at your workbook. In fact, I expect you to. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. This is on page nine of your workbook. I want what we're going to do is just kind of go through it and write it down if you haven't already. Okay. Uh, but try to make sure all that's going on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the verbs of every other language, as well as Greek, have what? Tense, tense, tense voice, 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 mood, mood person, person, and number. number. Okay. And again, Sawyer in his book listed the five pertinent components of the verb. The lexical form of a verb is essential and is considered the component. So the lexical form will be the form in its original state, as you would look it up in a lexicon. So think about this also with regards to nouns. When you're looking up for this, something like this. Now, by the way, what is a lexicon? Book of words. <laughs> it is a book of words. <laughs> book of words. It's kind of like a dictionary. No. It tells us you, you, once you have the word itself, you could look it up in a like and it yeah. will tell you the various meanings of the word. And it will also, and depending on the circumstances, uh, talk about depending on how extensive the lexicon is. It will talk about the various uses of the form, word in, in the various contexts. So when you look at the lexical form, that's the reason why we want you to know the lexical form. So you need to know I'll gay, I'll go, you know, and all the way to all the way through there. All right. What form is the lexical form? Again, it's the way the verb is presented in the vocabulary form and in the lexicon in the dictionaries. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right. What is defined in English as the quality of the verb that has to do with time in English? Tense. Right. In Greek, there are two characteristics. It talks about the time of the action as well as kind. the kind of the action. Now, why is that so important? Because again, in the Greek, it doesn't always do what we think it should do as it would in English. So as we talk about tense in the English, it's present, past, or future, right? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But in the Greek, it can not only be present, past, and future, but it could also talk about whether the action just happened and didn't do anything else, whether the action happened and the results of the action happening are continuing, or whether it's all continuing. So it, that's what we was trying to emphasize last week. That's very, very important. So we talk about the idea of Sophia sings. That's a simple phrase. She's singing, she's doing it right now. Sophia is singing. Well, now it's, you know, now it's more of the idea of a present progressive idea. She's not only singing now, but she is, as you're listening to it, in the way we would think about it in English, is she is continuing to sing, which would be found in the present tense of the Greek. Okay? So, again, try to keep that in mind. It's not just the pres pa pre present past, the past, present, and future. It is also the kind of action that is involved. Okay? Anybody have a problem with that? The more we go through this, the more you'll understand how this will play out. All right. As I said, there are three possibilities as to the time of the action. What are they? Past, present, past, present or future. Past, present, or future. And the kind of action suggests the ideal of what? Progressive. Progressive, undefined, undefined or perfected. Now, perfected suggests, again, something was done. And the results of whatever was done continues on till now. Progressive means it's continuing to be done. Undefined means it just happened and it doesn't say anything more about it than that. All right? All right. So 3.323A3. What kind of action describes the action as having been completed with the result of the action continuing? Perfected. Perfected. Okay. Perfected. Very good. What action is expressed with the aorist tense and does not specify the kind of the action? Undefined. Undefined. Very good. Now, the aorist tense is what we would consider to be what? Past tense. Okay. But really, again, it, a lot of times we will translate it in the past tense. But it also, we've got to keep in our mind, no, this just happened once. That's all that we're going to say about it. Okay. And then... <clears throat> What kind of action implies a continuation of the action? Progressive. Progressive. Or, that's right. Now, what is the quality of verbs which indicates the relationship of the subject to the action? The voice. voice. That's right. So the blank voice means the subject is doing the action. Active. Active. That's so simple, right? Uh, I always remember that, okay, the active voice means that they're doing it, okay? And that's, that's simple to understand. The what voice means the subject is the recipient of the action. Passive. Okay, passive. And then in the Greek, they also have the middle voice, which means what? The action is returning to the subject. So we, we would use the, something like this. Tommy himself said, so that he, so you see it's coming back to me. Everything I say is coming back to me. So that would be what we would understand to be the middle voice. But again, we don't hear that too much in English as you will find it a lot in the Greek. All right, what is the quality of verbs that indicates the, rela action, the relation of the action to reality? Mood. The mood or the, also the mode. And we talked about the indicative mood which is the presentation of an assertion or fact. In other words, it's what we would call a declarative sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The subjunctive mood is something that is desirable or wished for, but it's uncertain that it's going to happen, but it's probably going to happen. Subjunctive mood. And we'll get into that later on. I'm just going ahead and tell you, telling you now, because I know that this, some of you are saying, okay, well, what, what does this really mean? The optative mood means the speaker is portraying an action as possible, but not probable. Paul will say in Romans chapter 3, 3 and 4, may it never be so, or uh, let it not be so. Okay? So that's the optative mood. And then the imperative mood is what? Anybody remember? Um, ah. Okay. It's the command. We tell okay, the children, you do this. Yeah. It's imperative. Okay. We even yeah. say that sometimes, don't we? It yep. is imperative that you do your Greek homework. Okay. So again, that is a command by the teacher for your own good, <laughs> right? <laughs> 
but it, it is done for the purpose of getting you to do what needs to be done so that you'll know what, how you do it and why you do it. Okay. All right. The blank mood is that mood which confirms the reality of the action from the perspective of the speaker. I'm on page 10 now. Indicative. The indicative mood. All right. And the subjunctive, optative, and imperative are three potential moods. And I like that word potential moods because it suggests what could happen or might possibly happen or probably will happen, right? But even if I give a command, if I give a command and it's imperative, it's up to you whether you will do the work, right? So there, there's the idea, okay? All right, blank is the quality of verbs which indicates whether the subject is speaking, I see, is being spoken to, you see, or being spoken of, he, she, or it sees. So what is that? Person, very good, very good. Y'all are doing great work on this. That's why I'm trying to encourage everybody to speak up so I can see where everybody is and how everybody's doing on this. All right, blank is the quality of verb which indicates whether it's singular or plural. Number. Number, there you go. The lexical form of a word is the purest <clears throat> or most basic form of a word. In nouns, adjectives, and pronouns, the lexical form is the nominative singular form. Given time tonight, we'll get into that in just a little bit, okay? In the Greek language, I'm at 3.3 .3 now, no subject pronoun is needed because this is included in the inflection or the personal ending of the verb. So whenever I see the word ago, I automatically know it means what? I, I. right? If I see ages, then I know you, you. leave, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to have, now sometimes you will still find those personal pronouns. In the Greek, they will use the pro personal pronouns plus the ending on a verb to emphasize it even that much more. So. It, it, you know, it might be like a gaze would be you lead, but <clears throat> you might find the personal pronoun there. And it's now like you yourself are leading. Okay. It, it's, you hear the emphasis there rather than just your lead, but now it's you yourself are leading. That that's even makes that much bigger impact. And the group will do that. So just understand, we will be learning some of those subject pronouns. Okay. But, um, uh, We'll talk about that in lessons seven, nine, and 10, all righty? The ver rule of the accent of verbs is a recessive. The accent will move as near to the beginning of the word as possible. Now, what is the ultima? Last syllable. The last syllable of a word, okay? Mm -hmm. If the ultima is short, and again, that's the reason why you needed to know those things, the antepenult, which is the third syllable from the end, will be accented. If the ultima has a long syllable, the penult will be accented. What is an infinitive? Combination of two things, part okay. verb, part noun. It's part verb, part noun. It has tense and voice that acts like a verb, but it can function in a sentence as a noun. And a lot of times if you're doing this, you would translate it, so uh, Louis, Luo, Luis, Lue, Luomet, Luete, Luusi, and then you have Luane. And you would always translate that to loose, to the preposition to, till, and loose, to loose. Okay? Simple. Right? Yeah. Right. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing people smile, and I keep seeing some of you just, you, you kind of got this glazed look. Look, look, don't get discouraged, okay? Don't get discouraged. What is the verb stem? It's the base base word. Right. Of any, of any, it's any the verb. Thing, I mean. That's right. It's the thing <laughs> that remains constant or unchanged as the verb endings change according to person number. Okay. So the present stem of the verb may be obtained by removing the omega from the first person singular or lexical form. The conjugation of any regular active indicative verb may be formed by finding the stem, then adding the personal endings O, A, A, Omen, Ete, Usi. Okay? So, 
These personal endings were connected to the stem by the variable vowels, an omicron before the beginning of a mu or a nu, and an epsilon before the other endings. <clears throat> and the way we're learning it is actually, uh, when the Greek language was being written, this actually changed a little bit while the Greek language was being written. So we're, I just want you to emphasize right now that you're really just getting what you need to know right now if you want to spend if you want to get a PhD in biblical languages, which I encourage somebody to do, go ahead and do that, but you will learn how it changed and why it changed. As, as language changes, right? Language changes all the time. Our language change. Um, some of the things that's being said nowadays, and now as they keep talking about it with the uh, texting and everything like that, we have a whole bunch of new words or slang or acronyms to mean what we're talking about. So language is changing all the time. The Greek language changed as well. All right. <clears throat> now, we're up on page 11. Go ahead and read the rest of that. Page 11, what tense indicates linear or progressive action at the present time? Present tense. Right. So you can translate it, he looses or he is loosing. She looses or she is loosing. Okay. It depends on, and again, it emphasizes progressive action. There is no distinction between the second person singular and the second person plural in modern English, though in Greek, these two are distinct by the ending of the words. Right. Am I going too fast? Am I, is everybody getting this? Do this. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Again, if you have any problems, let me know. All right, now let's do the exercises. We've already talked about the movable new. Um, it's usually followed by a word beginning with a vowel or diphthong. So exercise three, four, A. Translate the following verbs from Greek to English. Age. And I hope you're saying these words as you're going through. Mm -hmm. Age, because this gets it in your mind that much more. So age means what? Uh, a gay they he leads okay he leads she leads or it leads or you could be saying he is leading she is leading it is leading all right so just keep that in mind uh, again it could suggest this happening at the present time or it could suggest the continuous action of it all right okay let's say the next word akue 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 i'm just hearing one person Come on, a kue. A kue. All right, now, what does that mean? She, she, it, she, kue, a kue, oh. he, okay. Acoustics. Uh, Acoustics. Hear. Hearing. He, she, or it hears, or? Is hearing. Is hearing. <laughs> okay, always keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. Next word, blepe. Say it. Blepe. Blepe. All right, what does that mean? He, she, it. Right. There you go. Uh, I'm trying to remember my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember my vocabulary. Well, yeah, um, you got to remember the vocabulary. Yeah, no. Uh, he, what were you, come on. C. You don't, you haven't got the vocabulary of that? They see, see right? See. He sees, she sees, it sees, or he, she, or it is seen, right? Hey, Tommy, what's the difference? Well, you know the difference, but if is there a difference between them saying he, she, it sees, or is seeing? Is there would there be a, a reason for using one in a sentence versus another right. in a sentence? You will if you've got a masculine noun, and that's going to be the next couple of lessons talking okay. about masculine nouns, the feminine nouns, and what the word itself means. Okay. Now, again, in our, we don't, in English, we don't really think of uh, masculine nouns or feminine nouns. We just use it. But just about every other language on the planet has these feminine and masculine forms, as well as neuter forms. And mm -hmm. that's how you would determine what word you would use in that circumstance. Okay. 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 All right. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
he, she, it has. Okay, that is, there, he, she, or it has. There you go, you're getting it, there you go. So that's it. Now, what is the stem of each of these verbs? Of the verb ago would be? Og. 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 The alpha Og. and the gamma, the alpha and the gamma. Okay. All right, that's all. So you drop that omega, and then you'd add the personal endings, all right? What is the stem of akuo? Alpha, kappa, omicron, upsilon, okay? Okay. Alpha, kappa, omicron, upsilon, all righty? What would be the stem of blepo? Blep. Right, blep. <laughs> All right, beta, again, we're going through this again. Beta, lambda, epsilon, P. Okay, what would be the verb, or excuse me, the stem of echo? Ech. Right, ech or epsilon, epsilon P. Okay, or key, that's right. All right. Now, what does the epsilon iota ending reveal about the subject of these verse, verbs? Uh, second person... Singular. No, the third person singular. No, no, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's the third person singular, and they are acting. They are, there are a specific person or thing, and they right. are the ones acting in some specific way. Okay? So that's what, that's what you got to think about. All right. Let's say the next one, number two. Is everybody getting this now? Is it, making it, is it coming a little clearer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't see Justin's face and I can't see Donnie Collins, but I see y'all's faces. So at least you're getting it. That's, that's good. That's what I want. Stop me if you have a problem. All right. That's what I'm here for. Let's say the next word. Number two. Who wants to try that one? I didn't hear you. <laughs> huh? I didn't hear my, my, my sound cut out. I'm sorry. Okay. Hey, All right. Hey, a gay Roman, a gay Roman, a gay Roman, a gay, the I, e I makes an A sound, a gay Roman, a gay Roman, okay? Would there not uh, be a... Translate that? I'm sorry, what? Would, would, there, not, would there not be a uh, uh, sound before that? The accent mark over the E? Is, or am I reading that wrong? I'm, <laughs> I may be reading that wrong. I think it's, um, it's the other way, so it's a gay row, not a gay row, it's a gay row. It's the okay. okay. breathing. It's the smooth breathing, not the rough breathing. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. What does this word mean? Now you you've got this word. What does it mean? A gay, a gay Roman. A gay Roman. What does it mean? What does a gay Roman mean? That's Bob. I raise up. There you go. <laughs> I was trying to stand up so y'all would pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whatever I can do to help you learn it. That's what I'm trying to do here, okay? Now, this is first person plural, so it's not I rise up, but we rise up. We raise up. We arouse. In other words, you could use, depending on the context of the sentence, it might be as we raise up, we arouse, we might waken, okay? So this would be a word for awaken. So we woke up. All right, so that's the way we put it nowadays, but we wake up, mm -hmm. all right? All right, anybody want to try the next word? Come on, you can do this. Genoskamen. Genoskamen, there you go, there you go. And what's the translation? We know. We know, we know. Genoskamen, genoskamen. Again, try to put the accent always where the accent is found, genoskamen. All right, who wants to try the next one? Uh, uh, Jeff? <laughs> Pass. Uh. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, mercy. Come on. You can do it, brother. I know you can. Well, um, hurrah. And I, take me a minute. I can do it, but. It's okay. That's okay. Take your minutes. Garafo. Garafamo. Am I getting close? 
You're getting, you're getting, you're just about there. You just get the last two letters right. Garofamo, Garofamo, let's see, N. Grafo, Grafo, Grafo Min. Grafo Min, okay. Okay, you're so close, brother. There you go. <laughs> All right, Groffelman. Now, again, we're emphasizing where the idea is. It's Groffelman. Groffelman. What does that mean? We write. We write. Again, first person plural. You would drop the O, so it'd be Graffo. Now you're just adding the Omen, the Omicron, <clears throat> Mu, Epsilon, Nu. So it's re -white. We, we write. <laughs> <laughs> You're having trouble pronouncing the Greek. I'm having trouble saying <laughs> English. So we're going to get along just fine, aren't we? <laughs> All right. Who wants to try the next? Very good. Seth, come in here. He worked on it while we was working on the Groffelman. And I appreciated that. I saw, but that's okay. <laughs> Say it again louder. Lombonoman. Lombonoman. And again, what does that mean? We take. We take or we receive, okay? And again, the context will make the difference. It would be, you know, if I'm giving you a present, you receive it, but if you're stealing it from me, okay, we're, <laughs> you're taking it. There, there's a whole, whole difference. The context makes the difference. So what is the function of the Omicron in these verbs? Again, this is a variable vowel that is shortened from the omega and placed before mu or nu, okay? So that's how they make it. It's a variable vowel, an omicron, that is shortened from the omega and placed before mu or nu, okay? So the letters, the variable vowels are always going to be an omicron or an epsilon, okay? Okay. So it always, you'll always start off. So you have little o, which is the omega, but if you're changing it before an iota, it's going to be an epsilon, and before a mu or a nu, it's going to be an omega, right? Why are these verbs accented on the antipenult? No idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, says so. because <laughs> verbs have recessive accent, they're trying to get back as far as they can. So, it's on the antipenult, and that means it's going to be on the furthest verb or the furthest syllable closest, you know, closest to the beginning of the word. So that's the reason why that is. All right. I told you last week and a couple of weeks that I had a lot of problems with this. That's why I I'm trying to emphasize this at the same time for two reasons. Number one, so that I could get it in my mind and hopefully get it in your mind. But also, secondly, and more importantly, uh, I'm trying to do it so that you can understand why they're accented the way they are. And when we actually get into reading Greek sentences, you will see how the accents help us in the flow of the sentence. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, that's the reason why I'm emphasizing it. Not so much that I'm going to con concern whether or not you know exactly where to accent it, but I want you to know why. That's important. All righty. Um, let's skip to page 13. Now, page 12 talks about blepusin, lambanusin, legusin, pimpusin, and again, uh, go through all of that. Have all of you already done those already? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Work through that. I want to go on to part 13, three, four, B. Translate, translate, dissect, and parse the following words. Okay? <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. All right. So the first word is who's going to say it? Let's see. Donnie, are you there? Justin, are you there? <laughs> is everybody okay? Justin, on number 13 on the workbook, under that first word, say that first word for me. Gnoskis. All right, good, very good. Gnoskis. Gnos the E I makes an A sound, a long A sound, so it's Gnoskis. But you did good. You did very good. All right. What part of speech is that? 
Well, seeing as how all we're studying now is verbs, you ought to get this one on every one of them, okay? <laughs> Verb. <laughs> What's the stem? Gnosk. Gamma, Iota, Nu, Omega, Sigma, Kappa. Gnosk. What tense? Huh? Think about this for just a minute. This is going to be the easiest, easiest lesson on this one you'll get. All that we've studied so far is present active indicative, okay? <laughs> we haven't gone into errors. We haven't gone into anything else. So the tense will always be in all this page, present active indicative. The tense is always present. What person is it? First, second, third person. Third person. Gnosko, Gnoskes, Gnoske. So the second person. Second person. Sister. Second person. What number? Singular or plural? Singular. Singular. Very good. Gnoskes. All right. And the ending is what? Epsilon, Iota, Sigma. Epsilon, Iota, Sigma. Very good. Very good. What is the connecting vowel? Oh. It'd be, it'd be the epsilon. That's right. It's the epsilon. Very good. Very good. It's the epsilon. What is the lexical form of the word? Gnosko. 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 Very good. And the subject? In other words, if I'm translating this now, I know it means you, you, singular or plural? Singular. You're singular, so the subject would be you. All right, okay. you. All right. All right, so you write down the word you there. Let's take the next one. I'll do this one. Give everybody a chance for a moment, okay? Eckelman, Eckelman, okay? Eckelman. This is a verb. The stem is X, epsilon, chi. Present, first person. The ending is omen. Omicron, mu, epsilon, nu. Active voice, plural number. The connecting vowel is an omicron. Mood is indicative. The lexical form is echo. And the subject is what? You. No. This will be the first person plural, so it's going to be we. 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 Okay. We. Okay. All right. What's the matter, brother? <laughs> no, I was looking at the wrong word. I'm, like, I'm not looking at it. I'm going to see what he's saying. Yeah, the wrong word. Okay. It helps if you're looking at the right I, word. Yeah, I'm with you're you. We're going to have some fun with this, okay? <laughs> and I want us to all understand it. We're gonna, all going to laugh at one another, and that's okay. You know, <laughs> that, that's it. All right. The next word, agusin. Agusin. All right. What part of speech? Verb. Verb. Very good. The stem? Og, okay, be alpha gamma, Og, uh, alpha gamma. Pinch, present, very good. Person, um, who's seen a uh, third. third, third person, third what person. plural. Plural, very good. You, you see, I think I remember last week, and I talked to you. And by the way, did both uh, did everybody get both of those videos that I gave you last week? Yeah, good. So did that help any? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What, 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 I, don't know, I don't know that I got those videos. You're talking. What are you talking about? Okay, I recorded a video in class last week, but then I also Friday I went back and re-recorded it because I think I left some of it out. And I also added some stuff. If you okay. haven't got it, I'll make sure you get it, brother. Okay, I'll okay. talk about that. But I'll make sure you get it, all right? So, I'm glad that helped out. All right, so it's third person plural, present, active, indicative. The lexical form is what? I go. I go. And the subject would be? They. They, all right. What I strongly encourage you to do and, and I know your, your family may think you're losing your mind. When you go through, like, go through those words 
<clears throat> on <clears throat> page 11 of your book, Gnosko, I write, go through the house and say, Gnosko, Gnoske, Gnoske, Gnoskomen, Gnoskete, Gnoskusi. The more you do that, the more you're gonna, it's gonna just come to you just like this. Gnosko, Gnoske, Gnoske, Gnoskomen, Gnoskete, Gnoskusi. Grafo, grafe, grafes, grafomen, grafate, excuse me, I'm sorry, say I made a mistake. Grafo, grafes, grafe, grafomen, grafate, grafusi. Okay? The more you do that, the more you want to get that in your mind. Lambano, lambanes, lambane, lambanomen, lambanate, lambanusi. All right? The more you do that, the more you'll get it. And again, every week we're going to keep adding to these words, these verbs. So again, if you do that, you will get those, you will get that in your mind and then you'll be able to just to spit it out just like that. What I want to encourage you to do is you go through the rest of page 13, page 14 and 15. If you've not already done that, get all that done. And let us begin in the last 20 minutes to start talking about nouns. All right? <laughs> We're on lesson four now. Any questions or comments up till now? <clears throat> Again, I don't want you to be discouraged. All right? I know you're probably sitting there thinking, that I'll never get this. Yes, you will. By the end of this lesson, you will have some exercises where you actually translate the following sentence. Look at verse nine, or page 19. Down at the bottom. See that? O anthropos gnoske ton nomon. O anthropos gnoske ton nomon. Now, whenever I'm translating the sentence, first thing I like to do is find the verb. Where's the verb in that sentence? Gnoske. That's right. Gnoske. And I automatically know now it's what? Third person singular. So it's he, she, or it are going to what? They know something, right? He, mm -hmm. she, or it knows something, right? Mm -hmm. Now, whole anthropos. Now, <coughs> what does the word anthropos mean? Man. Man. The man. We study anthropology. That's where we get the word from, the study of mankind, right? So, hoanthropos. So here you have the man knows what? Well, that's going to be the word, another one of the words. The man knows the law. Now you have, in essence, translated your very first Greek sentence. Okay? See? And again, all right? So... Let's talk about this very quickly. We've already talked about the Greek verb. Let's talk about the noun. As we talked about last week, nouns in the Greek are, are, have three categories called declensions. All right? Again, they are either masculine, feminine, or neuter. All right? So, <clears throat> Again, a declension is a grouping of nouns according to their endings, but has no effect on the translation, except in how the sentence is used. The second is declension is presented first because it is easier to learn, and there are more nouns in this declension than any other declension, okay? So this is the first declension. The second declension contains mainly masculine and neuter nouns, all right? The dominant vowel is the omega, or excuse me, omicron sound. That's why it's called the omicron declension. All right? In the Greek, the definite article, I'm on page 16, is declined as is the noun, but there though is no indefinite article to English like a or an. So, to express the indefinite ideal in Greek, the article is simply omitted. So you have hologos, what is that? The word, right? If it just simply says logos, then you just translate it word. You don't put anything else in it, it's just it. That's all there is to it. Or a word. 
Now, under certain circumstances, a noun which does not have the Greek article can be translated as if it does. Don't worry about that now, okay? Just get this point worked out right now, all right? The following chart shows the declension of the definite article for masculine and neuter nouns. You must master these forms. So how do you master the forms? You run around the house. Not only do you do the grafo, grafe, scrafe, grafomen, grafate, grafusi, but now you're going to say hoanthropos, hoanthropu, hoanthropo, hoanthropon, hoanthro, <clears throat> as you go all the way through there. Now, <clears throat> the definite article. All right, so you're going to have this. Well, okay, the definite article is not used with the vocative case, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. The noun is what? Person, place, or thing. Person, place, or thing. All the words in the vocabulary list in this now lesson are nouns except the word chi. Right? And chi. Word and. Every time you see the word chi in Greek, it's and. Right? It's like our and. How often do we use and? Constantly. Right? So just understand that that is it. <clears throat> chi is what you call a conjunction. You're adding. Yeah, right? All right. So, <clears throat> chi is a conjunction. The Greek noun is identified by listing the nominative singular form followed by the appropriate article in the nominative singular. All right, just a minute, I'll tell you what the nominative and all that other stuff is. In the normal, <clears throat> you will always know the gender of a noun by the article. In normal usage, the article will proceed the noun. So, in English, nouns have lost most of their declined forms so that a noun can be a subject or an object with the same form. So we say the angel sees an apostle. What is, now, if I was doing this in English, what would I be concerned about? The angel sees an apostle. All right, now let's think about this a minute. Where's the verb? See. See. That's the verb, right? So here you have two nouns, angel and apostle. This, we would say, is what, the, what part of the sentence? The subject. And this would be... Object. But we would call it the predicate. Yeah, predicate. But we'd also call it the object. The object of the verb, right? Now, we understand that. Just like we, we in the English, we see this, and we know if we find the verb, we know that the first part is the subject, that's going to be the verb. You could have one entire sentence just right here, the angel sees, right? But it doesn't tell us what he sees or what, she's, or what it sees, right? An apostle, an apostle. So think about this. Now here is the subject, the predicate, the object of the verb, there's the verb. We have pretty well identified everything. Here is what? Definite article, here's an indefinite article, right? Now we've identified every part of the sentence. <clears throat> By the way, the worst grade I ever got in a school was an English and D. <laughs> got a D in English. So, uh, uh, grew up in Alabama, maybe that explains something, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> All righty, so just keep that in mind. Now, in the Greek, the subject, the object, and all the other functions of the noun will do like the verb in the fact that you will see it by the ending of the word, okay? By the ending of the word, all right? So if you're looking at page 16 down there, it says, thus in Greek, these two sentences would read, O angelos blepe ton apostolon and O apostolos blepe ton angelon. Now, I want you to notice you have the word ho angelos, which is what? That would be the subject. And that word is what? Angelos is what? Angel or messenger. The angel, blepe, he, see, or it, 
EC, right? Yep. Okay. Blepe, ton apostolon. So here, up, home would be the apostle, not an apostle, but the apostle. And it's the object of the verb, the angel saw. All right. Uh -huh. You can also have the sentence, ho apostolos, blepe, ton angelo. Now you have what? Ho apostolos, which is the apostle, An apostle. Sees the angel. He just twisted it around a little bit. But I want you to notice that <clears throat> the way you can tell the difference is not so much the where it is in the sentence, but by the ending of the word. Just like luo, you can tell the verb, and you know it's I loose. Now here you have apostolos. You know by this ending, os, that it's the nominative form, so it's going to be the subject. But if it has apostolon, that ending of that verb, the ending of the word there will tell you it's the predicate. Sometimes, and this is what makes it so interesting, is they are not as concerned about word order as we are. So sometimes, if they want to emphasize the apostle, the apostle, and the predicate, they might put the the predicate first, then the verb, then the subject. And that just totally explodes our mind because no word order makes a difference. The reason why it doesn't in the Greek is because they might be adding these two words together because they want to emphasize the apostle as opposed to the person who saw the apostle. Does that make sense? Am I making sense to what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody agree with me? Everybody yeah. see what you're saying? I'm saying, okay. So that's what I want us to key in on. So as we go through this, just understand that where the word in the sentence is does not mean that's where the subject and the predicate will be, okay? So now let's look at these <clears throat> cases for just a few moments. The Greek has eight distinctive cases. Whenever I went to college, they, they emphasized the idea of five of them. Uh, so, but they, this book is emphasizing this. The nominative case, and I'm on page 17. The nominative is the case of designation. It is the naming case. Its main use is that of the subject of the sentence or clause. So the nominative case is the subject of the sentence. Always keep that in mind. The nominative case is the subject of the sentence. All right? So you have o apostolos gnoske. What does that mean? The apostle what? Knows. The apostle knows. All right? And you know that not only because the book says so, but because the Greek, okay? O apostolos, the apostle knows. It's a Greek sentence in which the nominative serves as the subject of the mm -hmm. sentence. Now notice that little phrase, you will learn other uses of the nominative later. Don't worry about that now. <laughs> just, just get this part now. Okay, don't worry about that now. The genitive case is the case of description. The nominative case is the case of designation where it names it. The genitive case is the case of description. The word appears in this case, it specifies or qualifies the word or the idea that it modifies. So you have in the phrase, ho oikos to apostolu. Right now, the word oikos is house. So this phrase is translated, the house of the apostle. And I know that by the two apostolu. Do you see that? So the genitive apostolu describes oikos by telling to whom it belongs. So it is the apostle's house or the house of the apostle. Now, how would we do it a lot of times? We would, in the, we would in, a, in the noun of a sentence, if we were trying to describe that this was, this was my billfold, I would put Tommy's billfold and I'd put an apostrophe S and you would understand that this was Tommy's billfold, right? They do it with words and the word order. So you have oikos to apostolu, so that means the apostle's house or the house of the apostle, right? Notice the genitive will have other meanings to be observed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, don't give up, don't give up. 
The ablative case is the case of separation. It uses the same form as the genitive, but it has a distinct function. So you have the sentence, who apostolos pimpe to dolus, dolus to oiku. Right? That sentence means the apostle sent the slaves from the house. The apostle sent the slaves from the house or sent the servants from the house, all right? To oiku is ablative, in, indicating separation. Again, some of these prepositions will help these noun express these functions, but the case alone may convey these ideas. So you have the ablative. Who apostolos pimpe tus dolus to oiku. Also sends the servants from the house. Does that make sense? Am I losing anybody now? Okay, all right, I'm, I'm trying, you know, if, if there's a problem, let me know. The dative case is the case of reception. So, here you have ho apostolos. By now, we ought to know what that is. Ho apostolos is what? The apostle. Very good, very good. <laughs> the apostle, the apostle, lege, speaks. He speaks. So, notice it's third person singular. The apostle speaks. To the crowd, to the crowd. So it's the date of reception. In other words, and you see the ending to, and notice, remember that omega with the oda subscript in both of those forms. So that tells you that it's the dative case, right? The locative case. <clears throat> this is the case of location. The form is the same of the dative as the dative. So you have ho apostolos didaske to oiko. The apostle is teaching or teaches in the house, in the house, okay? The instrumental uses the same form as the dative and expresses means or instrument as the name implies. So here you have, who apostolos didaske nomois. The apostle teaches with laws. Again, how can you tell the difference? Because again, the ending of the word nomos now you have the word no moist, and that tells you that it could be instrumental. And then the accusative case is the object. That's all it is. It's the case of limitation. It's limited to the object. So you have a whole apostolos didaske tone quion. The apostle is teaching or teaches the son. Now we have what? The son is the object of the verb, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the vocative case is the form of address. So it says, Adelphe, blepo, oikon. Brother, I see a house. Okay, so it's just the case of address. So, <clears throat> going down to the next page, masculine nouns. Now notice the declension. You have anthropos. Anthropos, anthropu, anthropo, anthropon, anthrope. Anthropoi, anthropon, anthropois, anthropus. Notice again how every one of these is going to change. So you have the nominative case. Anthropos always means man or mankind, all right? Now, there's also another Greek word that really emphasizes the idea of men as opposed from women, and that's the word anair. Okay. In this case, we're just wanting to learn the word anthropos. We use the term all the time, mankind, anthropology, the study of man. Notice the nominative case. It ends with an omicron sigma, with a... Genitive and an ablative case, it ends with an omicron upsilon. With the dative, locative, and instrumental case, it ends with a, an omega with an iota subscript. Then the accusative case will always end with an omicron nu. Okay. You can tell the difference in the plural just by the ending of the word again. Anthropoi, anthropon, anthropois, anthropus. Did you hear me emphasize where the accent was? It changes in all of this. So, you do the same thing with the next word, logos. Let's say it together. Logos. Logos. Logu. Logu. Logo. 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 Logon. Logon. Okay. Nominative, invocative, plural. Logoi. Logoi. Logon. Logon. Logois. Logos. And logos. 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 <laughs> okay. 
All right, the next page, doulos. 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 There you go. Doulos. See, I haven't, even I have to work on this a little bit. Doulou. 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 Doulon. 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 Doulé. Now, doulé means what? That's vocative, so it's Doulé. slave. Servant. Go get me something, okay? Douloy. Douloy. Doulon. Doulon. Doulois. Doulois. Douloos. Douloos. <laughs> All right. Quios. Notice the rough breathing. And notice where the rough breathing is. It, because you have a hui here, so you have the rough breathing is on the iota. So it's quios. 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 Quiu. Quiu. Where is the accent on the second, uh, in that second syllable, why is it on the upsilon? Because again, the accent's always going to be on the second vowel of a diphthong, okay? Oh, sorry, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> All right. Quio. 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 Quion. Quion. Quioi. Quioi. Quion. Quion. Quiois. Quiois. Quius. Quius. And then the vocative case is we a. We a. We a. And then we have a couple of neuter nouns. Doron. Doron. Now notice the difference. In the masculine nouns, it's an omicron sigma. In a neuter noun, it's omicron nu. That's one way you can automatically tell whether it's going to be a neuter or a masculine. So doron. Doron, by the way, is gift. Doron. Doron. Doru. Doru. Doro. Doro. Doron. Doron. Dora. Dora. Doron. Doron. Dorois. Dorois. Dora. Dora. Okay. Y'all are getting it. Now notice the word heron. Now notice again, you have a rough breathing here, so it's Heron, this is the word for temple. Heron, Heron, Heru, Heru, Hero, Hero, Heron, Heron, Hera, Hera, Heron, Heron, Heroes, Heroes, Hera, Hera. Okay, all right. Now say the words. Go again. I can't emphasize this enough. So when you go, you know, you do your verbs. Ago, agay, sagay, egelman, or ago, agelman, <laughs> agate, agus, uh, agusi. Now you do the same thing with this. Anthropos, anthropus, anthropu, anthropo, anthropon, anthrope, anthropoi, anthropon, anthropois, anthropus. If you do that, these words will get in your mind, and you will again, the more you do this, and I know, like I said, I remember when I, I was so discouraged when I read this. I think before you take Greek, I think we need to teach a, a small class. And again, if we had more time in this, I would do it. Probably a small class, just reminding all of us about English. Mm -hmm. Because we use this all the time. We do it without even thinking about it, right? But we forget what the parts of the words are in the sentence, right? So yeah. sometimes it's not only that you're trying to learn Greek now, but you're also being reminded of how the English all fits together. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. that's part of the that's part of it as well all right so work through that finish up lesson three in the workbook start on lesson four in the workbook and the more you do this again the better off you'll be and we will pick up there next week we will go over it together and then as if this just isn't enough we'll go into the nouns of the first declension okay all right Hang in there, brethren. Do not. I refuse to let you get discouraged, and I refuse to let you quit. Okay? <laughs> Still, by the end of this, you will be able to sit there and say, wow, I've learned some of this stuff, and you're going to feel good about yourself. Okay? That's what I'm trying to do here. Do not get discouraged. All righty? Okay. Okay. I found the link you sent. I didn't. I found it. You did find it. Good. Yeah, I didn't look at it far enough. I thought it was just the link for the video, but I saw it. But okay, I, I do see the extra one, so I'll take a look at that. All right, look at both of those. I will get this link to you probably tomorrow, so you'll be able to pick up on that. Brother Collins, yes. 
Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You got a question? No, no. I'm just, I'm a, like a duck on a water, you know, I look over top, but that's a little Yeah, you're, you're fine. You're just like everybody else here. So don't sweat it, okay? Give yourself some time, give yourself some patience. You will be able to do this, all right? You will be able to do this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, all right. We're going to work through it every how long it takes, okay? That's, that's the point. Every how long it takes, I'm here with you through the ride, all righty? All right? Good. Any questions you have? If you're working on this through the week and you've got a question, I, you have my syllabus, you have my phone number, we'll sit down and talk about it individually. You want a Zoom meeting by myself? That's fine. We'll do that. Just let me know how I can help, all right? Good. All righty. All right. Hang in there, brother. <laughs> See you, Tommy. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.